hey hi welcome so in this video we are going to see how we can seed our database in sp.net core so you know many times we need to seed our database when we are working with a database uh, with our web application so in this video i will just show you how you can seed your database in sp.net core so first let's create a new uh, project so go to the project and uh, then go to the dotnet core section and select sp.net core web application and uh, i will leave it uh, web application 11 you can give it you know any name you want just click on ok and uh, here it will ask for the options i'm using sp.net core 2.0 and i am selecting web application and uh, uh, for the authentication, I will select individual user account and make sure you select user account in app. So this will be uh, using your local database. Okay, so click on OK and uh, then OK and it will create, uh, you know, the basic uh, SP.NET Core, the default SP.NET Core web application like here. So here it is and um, now uh, you can see that uh, we have only one controller account controller and every uh, other logics for our uh, home page and about all these are on razor pages you know that new functionality in sp.net core 2 so uh, uh, for the database seed we will uh, first create a simple c sharp class so you can create anywhere but i will create it in the data folder so that uh, we can you know uh, keep all our data related things in just one folder so i will keep it in data folder and uh, i will create a class and i will name it seed database and uh, click on add and now inside this seed database class uh, we need to add a you know I will add a static method so that we can access it uh, anywhere in our application. So basic idea is that I will write the logic to see the database here in this class and then I will access this class in the startup, you know, that config configuration section. So let's create a method here. So that will be public static void and uh, let's give it this name initialize initialize and uh, uh, okay yes uh, make it capital that's the best practice and uh, the parameter will be i service provider okay i will go with the suggested name and uh, here i will uh, write the logic for uh, first uh, we will get the context means the database context so let's uh, you know get the context of our database so where context is equal to so uh, this will we can get from our service provider And in service provider, there's a method for get get required service. Sorry, get required service uh, control dot. It will add the dependency injection. And uh, here, first of all, we need the context. So I will add you know uh, application DB context and. Uh, application db context here and uh, this is the main context you know whatever your database context is right now i am using the default one and uh, uh, this one is the default uh, application db context and it uses identity db context so here we are going to seed uh, our uh, sp.net you know sorry identity uh, users table so uh, the next thing is that we need the user manager because from the user manager which is the uh, you know provided by identity we can get if there is any user or not in our database so second thing is we will add 
you know user manager and uh, the same thing we will get it from our service provider dot get required service and this required service will be user manager and this user manager we will get from identity so like this user manager and this user manager have you know it will get data from uh, application user so just write application user uh, like this so now we have our reference for the user manager now the next thing is that we need to ensure that our database is created or not so it have just simple code context dot database and then you know uh, sorry ensure created so it will ensure that our database is created or not now here comes the main logic that uh, first we will check that if our you know uh, user table have any user records or not so context dot user this uh, users table dot any so now this method will check if there is any record in users table or not if there is no not any record then we will create a application user so application user user is equal to new application user and uh, it will have you know first of all we need the email i will give it email um, like b at rate c dot com and then sorry in the last then we need security stamp uh, security stamp so this will be simple you know grid grid dot new grid and then convert it to string like this and then the username now uh, here is that uh, you know uh, uh, the tricky part is that uh, previously when I used the same thing with uh, I think it was 1.1 or other then uh, giving username you know just like you know said or your name it was working but uh, recently when I was working uh, creating email and username uh, the both should be uh, 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 equal because uh, the default uh, uh, you know login screen it says email but actually it uh, uh, compares it with the username so in this case I will give it the same b at c dot com so now this is uh, our uh, application user object and now we need to create uh, the user record in our database so for that I will use user manager and uh, it have you know a create async uh, method for creating user so you have to just pass the user object and then the password so for this password I will just use password address one it's just simple password okay and uh, that's it it's the you know all code which we will need to see the database um, you know actually currently I am just using you know the seeding the users database but you can add you know more logic for creating roles or if you have another uh, database entity you can also see it here you know the same way it's just an example how you can you know create uh, sorry seed any database table so save it and now we need to uh, you know go to the startup file and here in this uh, configuration method we need to add uh, c database dot initialize and actually takes service provider so we need to you know pass service provider here so I will use app dot application services then get required service and this re required service will be type of i service provider factory you know like this i service provider factory and uh, now this one have uh, the create uh, scope method and from this create scope we can get the service provider like this same easy thing so right now uh, uh, 
from code side we are done and uh, now I will run it so you know when you will first time you will run it actually there is no database right now created so it will go and create a database then see that database and uh, then the default login page will appear so here it is uh, the uh, default home page and now if you go to this login button this login link then uh, uh, just write that email like b at the rate c dot com and just password is like uh, password great one which we you know gave at uh, when writing that code so just log in and uh, here you can see that uh, we can successfully log in so we didn't have to just register any user from this link uh, that uh, record was already seeded in the database so we can you know you can see we can log in so uh, this is how you can you know very simply see a database in sp.net core 2.0 if you have any questions just put it in the comments thank you